Cornelia Parker has this visual, powerful uh, uh, things. It's a full story. She, she gives us the narrative. What she does is make completely clear that art is not the thing. Art is uh, how we react to the thing in the full context of uh, what we know, what she tells us, uh, uh, what we read, uh, and, and uh, the relation between all these things. Yeah. And this is the connection I find with the kind of science I'm talking about, which is not a science of object, but a science of relations. Mm. And I think this is uh, something deep that we understand about reality. Reality is not about, reality is not made by object. We don't understand reality just by object. Mm. Like we don't understand Cornelia Parker work just by looking at it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, un we understand reality by looking at the relations between things. Oh, okay. And I think quantum mechanics is telling that. That's what deeply is telling yeah. quantum mechanics. This whole exhibition is something that you wanted us to come to. I mean, what is it about this exhibition that you think you know is, is just speaks to you? It's a resonance between uh, uh, the kind of art that, uh, in particular, Cornelia Parker, Parker does, uh, and the kind of physics in which I emerged, and uh, and that I talk about in my book, which is quantum physics. Yeah. Which is uh, the discovery um, that real of, of a deeper level of reality, which is made of relations instead of objects, like these works are in the relations between this and our brain and the rest uh, and not in the object themselves. We have discovered uh, that uh, at the core of the physical reality, uh, what is there is not things, it's not particles, it's uh, relation connections. Each object uh, is defined, is characterized, exists uh, by the way it interacts with something else. Right. So when it's not interacting, it's just non-existing in some sense. Okay. Uh um, this is what was discovered by the founders of quantum mechanics 100 years ago. And this is, I believe, it's becoming more clear today. So and what you you're telling us is that all the stuff that we learn about at school, those names that we know, electron and proton and neutron, you're saying they're not actual things? That's right, they're not actual things. It's not that they're false, right? I mean, if you see, I don't know, a forest uh, from a distance, it's a green velvet thing. So yeah. The forest is real. But when you go there, it's, much, it's a very complicated story, a forest. <laughs> <laughs> there are trees, trunks, animals, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so we have layers of understanding, and uh, quantum mechanics is a better layer of understanding of reality. Okay, so, so we're in a position where you know, we would say that all of these things are yeah, they're broken apart, and, and they're broken apart, so they're not entire objects. And, and you shift your perspective, and you might be able to you know, go in and see there's, a, there's a, a real thing there. But what you're saying is that these are real things, and, more, and focus more on sort of a conceptual understanding. Focus more how, how an object is the, the ensemble of the ways in which it affects other objects around itself. Right. That's what an object is. So an object exists reflected in, uh, in everything else. That's one reading of quantum theory, is a relational quantum mechanics. And uh, uh, there's a lot of people who are trying today, physicists, philosophers, even experimentalists, uh, to um, make this way of thinking of reality more and more, uh, more and more clear. But it's a debated thing. I mean, it's a, it's a so there are other ideas about <coughs> what there are other reality. ideas. There are people who think that there are many parallel worlds, world, yeah. worlds, and try to make sense of quantum mechanics in, in other ways. Uh, it's frontier science, not about a specific uh, object or a specific observation, but about how what is the nature of reality, yeah. how to think at reality of the deepest level. We in the past we have changed our mind. Uh, civilizations changed mind how to think about reality. And with quantum mechanics, it's happening again. Right. And uh, is there any way to, to test between these ideas? Think about what happened, for instance, when, we, when civilization changed its mind about whether or not the Earth is the center of the universe. Mm. Okay? We used to think that the Earth is round and, is, and the universe is all around it. That's the center of the universe. And at some point <coughs> around the Renaissance, we changed our mind and we decided <laughs> that makes much more sense to think that, no, this is spinning, going around mm. the sun, the sun goes around the, the, the galaxy. Can you make an experiment that shows the Earth is not the center of the universe? No, you cannot. But you can have a, a conceptual frame 
yeah. in which is not, and then you realize that it works better and better and better. It allows you, everything goes in order much better. So um, science is not about directly testable things. It's also about finding the right conceptual structure that works. So disagreement about how to interpret quantum theory uh, because some way of thinking about quantum theory will show to be fruitful, productive, and, and give us clarity yeah. in, in more and more. So your, um, your main work, which is to try and find quantum aspects of relativity, effectively, yes. space and time, um, that provides a way into understanding the basics and the foundations of what quantum theory might be saying about the nature of reality. Is it something that you feel is making progress now? Yes, enormously. I think it's enormously making progress. I think there are new experimental um, facts that we have learned. For instance, uh, uh, we have learned that there is no supersymmetry uh, mm. at, uh, at the CERN big uh, machine and mm. the, the scattering protons once against the other one. Yeah. Uh, we have learned that uh, in the universe there is an accelerated expansion, so there's a positive cosmological constant, that's the technical aspect, yeah. uh, while many people were expecting it was a negative. Uh, we have discovered that uh, uh, certain symmetry called the Lorentz symmetry is realized at very high energy in, in some, some ex uh, astrophysical observation. There's a lot of new knowledge about nature that uh, helps us. We don't have the problem of quantum gravity solved because uh, we don't have yet predictions of these theories verified. That's what it's uh, uh, being worked on. I, I work on, uh, on black holes, what happened in the center of black holes, how black holes end their life in yeah. the future. And uh, the hope is that with the theories of quantum gravity, thinking quantum mechanics in this relational way that I described, mm. we can get an understanding, for instance, what happened to black holes and uh, test these theories. And one of the ways of testing this theory is to connecting to observations and one possibility, which I'm keen about, is that black hole could evolve into something in the future which explain cold dark matter, oh, which is... Wow. Uh, okay. uh, which is, which is uh, perfect. This is which the is title of name. this piece. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which is a name Cornelia Parker chose uh, for, for this piece. Uh, cold dark matter comes from science uh, yeah. and is... Um, um, it denotes the, this observation done by astronomers uh, uh, which shows that there is much more matter in, in, in the universe than the one, we actu the one we actually see. So it's called dark matter because it's matter that we don't see is dark. Uh, we see its effects, its gravitational effects. Uh, and cold because uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's supposed to be cold, not to have much energy into, um, into it. And uh, it's a mystery. into Plato's cave. Into Plato's in, cave, in right. a way. Because right. I wanted to ask you about this, this whole idea that I, I read a lot with people saying, you know, we're working on a theory of reality or we want to understand what reality is. Do you think we can ever really grasp what reality is? Yes, of course, but we are already doing that because I don't think that there's an ultimate reality and we have to get to the ultimate reality. I think that we can understand reality better and then right. better and then better. It's like, you know, I mentioned a forest. I mean, a forest seen from a distance, uh, yeah. is, uh, it's, uh, it's real. But then you go closer, you see the trees, it's real. You see the trunk, it's real. You see the atoms in the trunks, it's real. So you understand better and better and better. The idea that at the bottom of all that, there is a final thing, yeah. I think is bad. It's a bad oh, idea. Oh, do you? Okay. It's so you, you, you extremely can't look for the ultimate idea. cause, effectively. There's no meaning of ultimate. It's just the reality is the ensemble of all these things. They're all real. I mean, I can know you, I can know you better and better and better. What is the ultimate reality of that? It's just the <laughs> ensemble, of all, example, the, yeah, the yeah. ensemble yeah. of all these yeah. things. Yeah. So do you think this idea that there is no ultimate reality, there's no sort of base level that we can ever find, is something that's shared by most physicists? I mean, no, no, it's uh, it, by many physicists, but not all. I think that uh, those who search for the ultimate theory, in my opinion, I may be wrong, but they are misled. We shouldn't look for the ultimate theory. We should look for solving one problem at a time. We don't understand quantum property of space-time, let's study this. We don't understand black holes, study this. 
we should better understand quantum mechanics, better understand quantum mechanics. Humankind has never got to the final thing. Why should we be the ones? <laughs> and it's okay to you know, like see these shadows on the wall and appreciate the details in the shadows. But if the you can see more, that's are great. shadows, and the shadow is equally real as the instrument, which is equally real as me looking at the instrument. Yeah. They're all real. Um, and they're all shadow of one another, okay? The instrument is what? It's a set of atoms that are my mind reads as an instrument, right. and my mind is itself a process uh, going, happening in terms of something else. So it's this complexity of reality, which is super interesting, and we want to decode, to better understand, to be better able to interact with it, and we should get out of this um, dream. Okay, ultimate reality is matter, it's... Uh, uh, language is uh, God, uh, is uh, mind, uh, it's uh, spirit. I mean, forget the ultimate reality. There's enough reality around us. <laughs> and enjoy the journey that we're on, I guess. And it's, enjoy it's, the journey, yeah. which is happiness and sufferance, but it's, it's <laughs> a good journey. And that's <laughs> just physics, right? Yeah, that's all, that's all physics, that's why. Right. Yeah. And um, what's your sort of takeaway when people often search for meaning in the universe? Or, or people would say, you know, surely our, our job is to, to find purpose in our lives and find purpose and meaning in the universe. Meaning, purpose, uh, it's not from the outside. It's not that, oh my God, there's no meaning because there's nothing from the outside to give me meaning. Meaning comes from inside me, from what I am. We are living beings, are producers of purpose, of, of meaning. That's what they are. Um, so asking what is the meaning of the universe is, is a silly question because uh, the universe is not a living being. The universe is just up there doing, doing its stuff. We are here doing other stuff. And uh, we are full of meaning. Sometimes there is a disease and we feel meaningless. Uh, but that's something that happens in us again. Understanding the universe and understanding how it works and, and understanding more and more about what atoms are doesn't unweave the rainbow. It doesn't, it doesn't take away the kind of beautiful complexity of, of existence for you. It's the other way around, I think. Um, it's a mistake to think, uh, oh my God, everything is just atom bouncing around, so nothing, there's no, there's no meaning. Yeah. <laughs> there's no justice, there's no love. Uh, because reality is complex. Uh, atom bouncing around is one way of describing what is going on, which misses, first of all, quantum mechanics shows that this reality is far more complex than, than just pieces of stones bouncing around. Uh, but also, um, atom bouncing around create an enormous amount of complexity where there is full space for love, meaning, purpose, ideals, justice, uh, and all, uh, all these uh, spiritual things here, which are not denied by physics, uh, not at all. Uh, just physics gives a, a, a further layer of understanding what is going on. Of course, we don't understand well the relations with all these layers. Some are not clear. We don't understand completely how our mind works, mm -hmm. brain works. A, lot of, a huge amount of things that we miss the connections. But I think um, reality as a whole can be described in different manners, and these manners are coherent with one another. So where, what's next for you? Where, are you delving further into this? Uh, relational idea, or are you, are you moving into any new areas of physics? Or? Understanding what they call the dark matter, it's black holes. To understand black holes, we need quantum gravity, because um, at the end of the life of black hole, or the center of black holes, which is roughly the same thing, the classical general relativity is not sufficient, the standard quantum mechanics is not sufficient, you, you need quantum, mechanic, quantum gravity. Loop quantum gravity, the theory uh, we've built with many friends and colleagues, it's a possible theory for that. So mm -hmm. the point is apply this theory. It's a set of equations, well-defined. You can do calculation. Apply this theory to tell us what happened to the black holes when they finish their life. Black holes have finite life. When they finish their life, some, some physicists think that they disappear magically, but I don't think they're right. right. Uh, they tunnel. That's a technical word. They quantum tunnel. They transform into some little things, some remnants, some white holes. and uh, uh, one hypothesis, which I'm far from sure, but the hypothesis I'm studying, is that these remnants are the dark matter that we see around, the, the cool dark matter that inspired Belinda Parker. That's beautiful. So, Carlo, thank you for talking to us, and I, I guess you know, bringing us here as well into this fantastic space. So, um, it's been great. Thank you. It was a great conversation. I loved it.